No, we're good. We're good. Y'all just tell me when. Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our wonderful Innovation Center here in Lexington School District 2. My name is Brenda Hafner, and I serve as superintendent in this fabulous district. On behalf of our board of trustees, many of whom are here today, that would be uh, Mr. Bray, I've seen, I know Mr. Bray, give us a wave, and Mr. Summers, and Ms. Kessler, and Ms. Rucker, did I miss anyone? Great. Uh, I'd like to thank Governor Henry McMaster for being here, along with a number of other uh, guests and officials, Senator Nikki Setzler, and Senator Katrina Sheely, Representative Chip Huggins, Representative Micah Kasky, Casey Mayor Elise Parton, and Robert Woods, our South Carolina Public Safety Director. Have I failed to mention anyone? Thank you all for being here. We are honored that Governor McMaster has given us the opportunity today to talk about a topic that we in Lexington too feel very passionate about and that is safety and our school resource officers. This school year, 2022-2023, is the first in recent memory that we have had every one of our schools staffed with an SRO. We've always had the majority of our schools covered, but often with one or two openings. But our district, our board, and our law enforcement partners never gave up on finding solutions to fully staff every Lexington II school researching and putting together a combination of state and local resources to make that happen. We are in a somewhat unique position in Lexington too, in that our school district includes five municipalities and of course Lexington County. However, several of our municipalities have smaller police departments and that was certainly a consideration when working toward full staffing of SROs. But the commitment from all of our partners along with that combination of state and local resources is the reason we find ourselves so fortunate to have SROs in all of our Lexington II schools. Our law enforcement partners provide that level of security all schools need today, offering training to our faculties and staff in handling crisis situations, performing safety checks in our buildings, and talking with our students about intruders. We have open and ongoing dialogues with these agencies throughout the year. They also support our school communities in other ways, from hosting school supply drives for students to being volunteer readers in our classrooms. And in short, they are a part of our Lexington II school family. On behalf of the district and our board, I would like to acknowledge Lexington II's six law enforcement partners whose 17 SROs work to keep the Lexington II community and our schools safe. Obviously, we have lots of folks here today, but I believe we have the heads of all of our Lexington II law enforcement partners with us. If you are here, please step forward when I call your name, and I know that you are. West Columbia Police Department and Chief Marion Boyce. Thank you, sir. Springdale Police Chief, uh, Springdale Police Department, excuse me, and Chief Andrew Richburg. Casey Police Department and Chief Chris Cowan. Did you bring your special guest, Officer Mandy and Hudson? No, ma'am. Oh, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I look forward to seeing them again soon. Sorry, we let you down. South Congaree Police Department and Chief Josh Schumpert. Pine Ridge Police Department and Chief Frankie Neely. And the Lexington County Sheriff's Department and Sheriff Jay Coon. I would also be remiss if I failed to mention Sheriff Leon Lott and Richland County Sheriff's Department, with whom I also had a strong partnership with previously in Richland County for 15 plus years who are here with us here today. So let's give all these folks a nice round of applause. Thank you for what you do, appreciate it. Thank you. Governor McMaster, I thank you for making school safety and the school resource program a priority. And ladies and gentlemen in law enforcement, I thank you for protecting and defending our citizens on and off campus each and every day. And now I'd like to welcome our next speaker, KC Police Chief Chris Cowan, and he will be followed in speaking by Director Woods and then the Honorable Governor McMaster. Thank you. The cops across this country are stepping up into roles that they've not traditionally had, mentors, counselors, teachers, friends, 
supporters, role models, and they continue to embrace those roles. Our SROs embrace those roles, and they epitomize what is good in our community. They are coaches, they are mentors, they are counselors, they're builders of character in the next generation in our communities, and they're a blanket of security in our schools. We're extremely grateful for the grants that we receive from the state of South Carolina. We're extremely grateful for the true partnerships that we have with all of the law enforcement partners that you see here before you. I'm extremely thankful for the commitment of my mayor, my city administrator, and our city council for everything that they do to make sure that our schools are safe. We're grateful for the grants that we receive because they allow our SROs to be in our schools, to be those coaches, to be those mentors, to be those counselors, to be that safety blanket for the children and the staff in the schools. And they continue to allow us to be that, to build the safe havens that our schools can be and will be for, for generations to come. We were honored this year to be recognized as the best SRO program in the state of South Carolina. But the fact is that this only happened because of the passion and the purpose that the SROs from the Casey Police Department have for these schools and the commitment that they have. Their passion is the most precious commodity that we have, which is our children. And I see that every day in the things that they do. And I'm extremely proud of them. Their passion and their purpose is for the children, but their passion is to be inside the schools. They want to be in the schools. They want to be that first line of defense, and they want to be mentors, and they want to be coaches, and they want to be counselors, and they're doing it every day. And I'm extremely proud of them because they are providing the best chance that our children have to be number one. And I'm proud to be on their team, and I'm proud of the work that they've done this year, and they'll, they'll continue to do. Director Woods. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Woods. I'm the director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. First, I want to congratulate Chief Cowan and his SROs for the recognition they've received and to thank them for the work that they do. And, and I want to extend that same thanks to every officer who's represented here and every department represented here on the stage. The SRO program is vitally important to the state of South Carolina. It's a priority clearly of the governor and it's one for the Department of Public Safety. With all that said, uh, in addition to our primary mission of enforcing the traffic laws through our highway patrol and our state transport police divisions, SCDPS is also responsible for administering the state and federal law enforcement and highway safety grants, uh, which includes state funding for SROs. Through the efforts of Governor McMaster and the General Assembly, this funding for SROs originally became available during the 2018-2019 school year. However, DPS assumed responsibility for this program on July 1, 2021. Working from a law enforcement perspective, we've spent the past year communicating SRO grant uh, opportunities to local agencies and connecting them with their local school districts. This approach has been very successful, and just to share some of these numbers with you. The number of state-funded SROs has increased over the last year from 171 to 295. That's a 73% increase. There is now a state-funded SRO in every South Carolina school district, and all eligible requests for SROs have been funded for this next fiscal year as we roll into 22-23. With the addition of the state-funded SROs, the total number of officers in South Carolina schools now stands at approximately 982. Now, I want to pause to break that number down, kind of unpack it for you just a minute. That means there's 683 totally, or excuse me, I should say locally funded and four federally funded SROs in addition to those 295 state funded SROs. Now, I'm going to tell you what that means to me. It means that these folks up here on the stage are the ones doing the heavy lifting. We at the state are just there to help them fill in the gaps, but we're all part of the same team. And when I say that, I think what is so critically important to take away is that we're all pulling in the same direction on this program, starting with the governor, to the General Assembly, to the school districts, obviously local law enforcement, the Department of Education, and the Department of Public Safety. But keep in mind that even with these successes, there's much work to be done, and there's, and there's some challenges that remain ahead. One of those challenges, of course, is just maintaining adequate law enforcement staffing. That is something that has affected all law enforcement agencies across the state of South Carolina and across the country. So as we move forward with those fully funded and fully staffed SRO positions from the state level, 
We're currently reaching out to the school districts, asking them to assess what their needs are moving forward, and then to reach out to local law enforcement and see what their capabilities are in filling those needs. <clears throat> Just want to reiterate this. Again, law enforcement right now is, is facing what is often referred to as, as a triple threat, which is decreasing applications, increasing resignations, and increasing retirements. So they continue to challenge us. But I can tell you this, in, in no uncertain terms, the governor and the General Assembly stepping up to help us in any way that they can. And we appreciate that greatly. And as we move forward in meeting this challenge, keep in mind it's going to continue to be a, a completely team effort. We want to encourage qualified law enforcement retirees to return to work. That's been allowed by Proviso this year by the General Assembly. And we want to reach out to them and say, listen, this is, this is a great way to give back, and we encourage you to do that. We also are appealing to service-oriented people to seek law enforcement careers. If this is something that you want to do, especially serve in the capacity in the schools as SROs and make a difference to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the next generation of South Carolinians, that's very worthwhile. And pursuing sound school security plans that include the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division's world-class active shooter training. With the continued commitment and support of Governor McMaster and the General Assembly, I am supremely confident that South Carolina law enforcement as a whole and special initiatives like the SRO program will continue to have the necessary resources needed. Thank you all very much. Aren't those great words? It is a real pleasure to be here. Uh, Dr. Hafner, this is a beautiful place you have here. Thank you. And I just am always thrilled to take a look at these law officers that we have in our state. Uh, I don't think they're any better anywhere in the country. And a lot of people uh, agree with me. South Carolina's got talent. We have talent from wall to wall. And as was mentioned, our most precious resource, of course, is our children because they, they, uh, they need to be educated, they need to be cared for, and they need to be safe. I remember years ago, a sheriff, a county sheriff in South Carolina was talking to some of us and told of a story about a, a mother that brought a rambunctious little boy over uh, to him and said, now, son, if you don't behave, the sheriff here is going to come get you. And the sheriff quickly said, ma'am, let me add this. He said, Sonny, I'm your friend. If you have trouble, you come to me because I'm here to protect you. That always stayed with me. And today, because of circumstances in the world and in our state as well, we have dangers in the school that we didn't have before. So we have these officers who are protecting those children. But besides protecting them, besides the stability that that offers, besides the freedom it gives the teachers one less thing to worry about so they can concentrate on teaching the children, it also sends a message that when these young people, these children, see that uniform from early ages on up, they learned that lesson that that sheriff was explaining to the mother. The idea of wearing a uniform is something that is important. They realize it's something that is respectful. It is something that they may want to do. And that opens doors to all sorts of first responders, including law enforcement, as well as the military. It is a powerful, powerful message that's important for our young people. This program began some time ago. We knew this is something I've been wanting to do since I've been in office, and we've gotten it done. We also, we, I remember Dr. Hafner standing on this stage a few years ago wanting to raise the teacher pay, and we have finally been able to do that. Just since I've been in office, it's gone up about $10,000, and it's not enough. It needs to keep on going up. And as some of you may remember, we did succeed in getting the income tax exemption for retirement pay, not for all uniforms, but for military in our state. Military retirement pay is tax exempt. 
from income in South Carolina. That needs to be extended to all first responders, including everybody you see standing on this stage. But this effort is, is a wonderful one that increases security, safety, and therefore increases, enhances the learning of the children uh, in our, our state. Um, we have the, I think it's about 19 million. I want to, I want to thank Senator Setzler, who has been a leader in this from the, from the beginning. Uh, there are many of us, others that have worked, but now we do have law officers available. They're not in every school, not yet, but they are, they're going to be there. And that is a great step forward for South Carolina. And I don't know another state that can, can boast that. But again, I mentioned the people. I mentioned these officers, the talented, trained, committed, and we need to have respect for all of our officers, all of our people. When I speak to, as, as I did today, to a company that's looking for some place to go, some place to land, one question they always want to know about is safety, school safety, safety in the community, but they always, they, they want to know about the people. We're proud of our people, and it is our, it's our people that have made us prosperous uh, in, in this country. And we have a procedure we use in our state to recognize those who have gone above and beyond the call of duty, who have service above self to an extraordinary degree. Uh, and we have a, a recognition that we can give those people. Now they're not applied for, this recognition is not applied for. It's called the Order of the Palmetto. It's the highest civilian recognition that we have in our state. And it can't be applied for, it can't be bought. There's a process we go through. Ordinarily the, the recipient has no idea that he or she has even been nominated for consideration. But we receive information from various sources. It's checked out, it's confirmed to see if it does reach that high standard required for the recognition. Mm -hmm. And we have such a person here today who, they have a number of people here today who have, uh, uh, are worthy of all kinds of recognition, everyone that you see standing, but there's one who has, whose name has been submitted and has gone through this process and probably doesn't know anything about it. And if she will come forward, please, Lieutenant Danielle McCord, if you will come Woo! forward, please. <laughs> Lieutenant McCord has worked for the Casey Department of Public Safety for 21 years. She's been just about everything, a dispatcher. I won't go through a line officer, investigator, victim advocate role, promoted to sergeant uh, over the community services division in 2019, then promoted to lieutenant. Uh, and she just keeps going up, up. She is Midlands Regional uh, SRO, supervises all Lexington School District number two SRO. She's established numer numerous community driven efforts to address what things? Food insecurity, clothing, supply shortages for children, the elderly, as well as vulnerable populations. She's created flyers and templates to give to others to do the same thing. And she serves as the SOR at Lexington uh, Two Renovation Center, mother of five children. Congratulations. That's a lot of children. It is. It absolutely is. <laughs> and she's a volleyball coach for the Busby Creative Arts Academy of Midland Schools, has received all sorts of awards, and she comes highly recommended, and it has been, she's been examined uh, in her absentia, and without her knowledge, and you have passed the test, and on behalf of 5.2 proud, happy South Carolinians, 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians, I'd like to present this to you and I shall read it. It says, State of South Carolina in grateful recognition of contributions and friendship to the State of South Carolina and her people, I do hereby confer upon Danielle McCoy the Order of the Palmetto with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto, 
signed by me, Henry McMaster, your proud, happy governor, on behalf of 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians. We honor and thank you, ma'am. Lieutenant, it's not required, but often the honor, we would like to say something. If you'd like to say something, there's the microphone. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm actually quite surprised, shocked, and at a loss for words. I know my chief is probably thanking God right now that I'm at a loss for words, but um, I do appreciate this honor. It's a huge honor. Um, this is my passion. It's the heart and soul of what we do every day. I'm trying not to get emotional. Um, I couldn't do what I do every day without the support of our city administration and our chief and my command staff and the men and women who work in my unit. Um, I get a lot of credit and recognition sometimes that I don't always feel I deserve. Um, and my team is absolutely, hands down, the best team in the Midlands. And I would say that every day to anybody who asked me. We pour our hearts and souls into these schools every single day. And it's not because it's a job. It's because we love what we do and we love every single person that walks in the doors of these buildings. And we will continue that mission because that's what's in our heart and soul. We carry a gun and a badge every single day and we're sworn to do duties that not everybody can do but we do it because it's our passion and it's in our heart and we are going to do it with pride every single day. I appreciate the recognition and I appreciate all of you guys coming today and uh, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for anyone? Uh, Joe? Who's got the latest count on that? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Where we are is, is 301. There's close, there's over 1,250 schools in the state. 900, as I've already mentioned, over 900 have uh, SROs. 300 are waiting. Uh, so that's that, that's that's the next hurdle we have to make is finding officers to put in those schools. Is it just pay that's difficulty, or is there other work conditions that make it hard to find officers? It, it, when we're looking across the spectrum in law enforcement, there, there's a number of issues that impact it. Uh, but what we know right now is that we're still looking at those three factors. We have higher resignations, we have lower applications, and we have more retirements. Um, so there's a number of factors that, that, that uh, tie into that. Uh, pay right now in many areas is not necessarily an issue. Uh, so you know, what we need to do is just find ways to get people interested in serving. And that's really the bottom line. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Chapin Monday? Chapin Monday? Everybody can hold it right here. We're going to try to get a